In a chilling re-evaluation of the strange history of the Denisovans, Graham Hancock suggests that the Neanderthals were far more intelligent and sophisticated than previously believed. That they were in every sense human, and they were in every sense human because anatomically modern humans interbred with Neanderthal. And what they discover is, this isn't a Neanderthal. This isn't an anatomically modern human being. This is another human species. Also, Graham shocked the scientific community when he revealed that we, humans, Denisovans and Neanderthals are the same species. Exactly the same, but how? Well, new discoveries are hinting at a lost global civilization. So, Graham Hancock revealed a lot of fascinating new details about our history and the Denisovans. So let's explain everything. The enigmatic Neanderthals, once portrayed as lumbering, dim-witted precursors to atomically modern humans, have undergone a significant re-evaluation in the public consciousness, in part due to the contributions of Graham Hancock. Hancock, renowned for challenging mainstream perspectives on ancient civilizations, has adeptly brought forward a compelling case that suggests Neanderthals were far more sophisticated and intelligent than previously believed. Hancock, in his quest to uncover the depth of Neanderthalian intelligence, places significant emphasis on their sophisticated use of tools. It's not merely that Neanderthals used tools, but the intricacy, innovation and adaptability they demonstrated that demonstrates our understanding of their cognitive capabilities. The Neanderthals' tool repertoire extended beyond simple stone implements. They were creators of a diverse array of tools, each tailored for specific tasks, from hunting and butchering to woodworking and hide processing. For instance, the Levelois technique, a specific stone napping method, is often associated with the Neanderthals. This method involves striking flakes from a prepared stone core in a manner that ensures each flake is of a consistent size and shape. Such precision requires not just skill, but also an ability to envision the final product even before the process begins. Beyond the immediate act of creating the tool, the Neanderthal's prowess is further evidence in the selection of raw materials. They often saw specific stones from considerable distances, demonstrating a knowledge of geological diversity and a willingness to travel or trade to procure the best materials. Such behavior suggests forward thinking, planning, and perhaps even a rudimentary form of logistics. The tools weren't just functional, but also displayed signs of wear and repeated use showing that they were not hastily made or discarded, but were maintained and valued. Some tools even hint at multifunctionality, where a single implement might have been used for various tasks, an early form of resource optimization. In addition, Graham Hancock has dedicated much of his career to uncovering the mysteries of ancient civilizations, pushing the boundaries of mainstream archaeological understanding. His explorations have taken him to various parts of the world, studying ancient sites, legends and peoples. One of his interests has been the Denisovans, a mysterious species of ancient hominins who once inhabited parts of Asia, especially in the regions of Russia and Siberia. The Denisovans were a sister group of the Neanderthals and were known primarily through a scant amount of fossil evidence, most notably a finger bone and a few teeth discovered in Denisova Cave in the Altai Mountains of Siberia. What is particularly fascinating about the Denisovans is that, while their physical remains are sparse, they left behind a rich genetic legacy. Hancock's journey to Russia and Siberia can be viewed in the context of his overarching theory that a lost advanced civilization predates many of the ancient cultures we know of today. While mainstream archaeologists have been cautious to draw broad conclusions about the Denisovans due to the limited evidence, Hancock, in his characteristic fashion, delves deeper into the realm of speculation and synthesis, seeking connections between different cultures and epochs. In exploring the caves of the Denisovans, Hancock is not just interested in physical remnants or the genetic legacy. He looks for hints of a larger story, or forgotten knowledge, rituals, and perhaps even ancient wisdom. The cave art, the placement of the caves in relation to other sites, and the myths and legends of indigenous Siberian peoples would all be of interest to Hancock as he tries to piece together a grander narrative. Hancock's perspective is valuable in that it challenges the dormant narratives and provokes thought and discussion. Whether one agrees with his theories or not, Hancock's dedication to questioning established beliefs and seeking out new possibilities is commendable. In his journey to Russia and Siberia, Hancock paints a picture of a world that is far more interconnected and complex than we might initially believe. 
The Denise events, while mysterious, provide a tantalizing glimpse into a past where different species of hominids interacted, interbred, and perhaps even shared knowledge. And one of the civilization that we should mention with Denisovans are advanced pre-Columbian civilizations. While the Mayans and Aztecs often dominate the discourse regarding the region's cultural and historical legacies, it is the Olmecs who stand as the earliest known high culture of Central America. Emerging from the tropical lowlands of today's Mexico, the Olmecs have bestowed a lasting influence on subsequent cultures, weaving their essence into the tapestry of Mesoamerican history. The Olmecs, flourishing from approximately 1400 to 400 BC, predominantly inhabited the present-day states of Veracruz and Tabasco in Mexico. The region's rich alluvian soil, combined with abundant rainfall, proved conducive to the establishment of a sophisticated civilization. Surrounded by lush rainforests, rivers, and swamps, the Olmecs effectively harnessed the region's resources, allowing them to create an intricate society. With that, Megalithic constructions, as the name implies, refers to structures built from large stones, without the use of mortar or cement. These constructions are seen across different ancient civilizations around the world, from the standing stones of Stonehenge in England to the Great Pyramids of Egypt. Along these marvels, the Olmec's megalithic endeavors, though lesser known, stand as a testament to their prowess in construction and engineering. What makes the Olmec's megalithic constructions remarkable is not just the sheer size of the stones, but also the technical expertise required to maneuver, shape, and erect them. The stones used in the Olmec constructions weighed several tons, with some of the colossal heads weighing up to 50 tons. Transporting these behemoths over long distances, often through dense jungles and over rough terrains, would have been an extraordinary achievement. It's believed that the Olmecs might have used a combination of tools, sledges, rollers, and perhaps even rafts to transport these giant stones from quarries to construction sites. The logistics and manpower required for such tasks would have been massive, indicating a highly organized society. Beyond the sheer scale of these megalithic constructions, the Olmecs demonstrated an exceptional sense of design and artistry. The intricately carved details on some stones and the symmetry on their monuments suggest an advanced understanding of art, geometry, and aesthetics. This blend of artistic flair with structural capability speaks volumes about the holistic approach to architecture. Many ancient megalithic constructions across the world are believed to have astronomical significance. While there's still much research to be done on the Olmec structures in this regard, some scholars believe that their placements and orientations might have cosmological or calendar-related purposes. If this were proven true, it would further solidify the Olmec's place as a civilization with advanced knowledge of the cosmos. For Hancock, these megalithic constructions hold deeper secrets and potential evidence of a lost ancient knowledge. In his books and talks, Graham Hancock has often discussed the idea of a lost civilization with advanced capabilities, suggesting that humanity's past might be more complex than mainstream archaeology believes. The Olmec's ability to build such megalithic constructions without the use of metal tools or the wheel further fuels Hancock's hypothesis of a prehistoric global civilization with advanced knowledge of architecture and astronomy. The colossal carved stone heads of the Olmecs rank among the most enigmatic and iconic remnants of ancient Mesoamerican civilization. As mute witness to a bygone era, they have inspired wonder awe, and numerous theories about their origin, purpose, and the people who made them. Ranging from 4 to 11 feet in height and weighing between 6 and 50 tons, each of these massive basalt heads is a marvel of ancient craftsmanship. They depict helmeted individuals with distinct facial features, broad noses, full lips, and rounded cheeks. The helmets, believed to be representations of jaguar hides or other animals, might indicate the status or profession of the depicted individuals. The unique physiognomy of each statue suggests that they might be portraits of specific individuals, perhaps rulers or important personages of their time. The detailed carving and intricacies of the heads indicate a high level of skill and craftsmanship. To craft such lifelike representations, the Olmecs would have rough cut out the general shape before refining the features and details, possibly using harder stones or abrasives. The meticulous effort and hours of work that went into each piece are evident, testifying to the significant value placed on these monuments by their creators. 
Given their grandeur and intricacy, it's no wonder the Olmec heads have generated various theories and speculations. Some scholars suggest that these heads represent rulers or warriors, underscoring their importance in Olmec society. The difference in facial features across the various heads might also suggest a record of lineage or the depiction of different rulers over time. Adding to the intrigue is the debate over the ethnicity of the depicted figures. While some see the features as purely indigenous, others speculate about potential trans-oceanic contacts and influences, pointing to the seemingly African or Polynesian features present in some heads. Graham Hancock also argues that the craftsmanship, precision, and intricacy with which these heads are carved indicate a level of sophistication and capability that goes beyond what would be expected from a civilization at this period of history. He proposes that these creations are potentially remnants of a lost global civilization or an inheritance of knowledge from such a culture. Furthermore, Graham also revealed that there was once an era when Homo sapiens were not the sole human species on Earth. This idea, while somewhat aligned with scientific findings, diverges in its broader implications, offering a window into a rich, shared history of diverse humanoid species. The coexistence of multiple humanoid species is not just a product of alternative historical theories, but is grounded in archaeological and anthropological evidence. Consider the Neanderthals, the sturdy inhabitants of Europe and Western Asia from around 400,000 to 40,000 years ago. These beings weren't just distant neighbors. Genetic evidence suggests they interbred with Homo sapiens. Further east, in the cold caves of Siberia, we find evidence of the Denisovans, another ancient human species. Like the Neanderthals, they too left an indelible mark on our genetic blueprint. The Indonesian island of Flores adds another layer to this story with its hobbit or Homo floresiensis, a species known for its diminutive stature and existence up to 50,000 years ago. This intricate puzzle of overlapping timelines and shared habitats naturally leads to questions about the nature of interactions between these species. Did they share knowledge, exchange cultural practices, or view each other with suspicion? The borrowing of toolmaking techniques, burial practices, and other cultural elements might have been common. However, life in the prehistoric world was not without its challenges. Competition for resources, territorial disputes, and other pressures could have sparked conflicts. Some theories even postulate that the advent of Homo sapiens may have precipitated the decline and eventual extinction of other humanoid species, either through direct confrontations or by outcompeting them for essential resources. Moreover, the ancient world is filled with mysteries, many of which have been brought to the forefront by alternative historians and journalists like Graham Hancock. One of the many mysterious ancient people were the Denisovans that was mentioned already. The enigma of the Denisovans is accentuated by the artifacts unearthed from the Denisova cave, hinting at their potential technological prowess. A particularly captivating find was a green stone bracelet, believed to be around 40,000 years old. The intricacy of its design, coupled with the evidence suggesting it was crafted using a high-speed drill and later polished with leather, is astounding. Such craftsmanship prompts reconsideration of the technological timeline proposing that Denisovans might have been technologically advanced, contrary to earlier assumptions. Equally intriguing was the discovery of a bone needle, considered to be approximately 50,000 years old and touted as the oldest known needle. Its existence not only hints at the Denisovans' capability to sew, but also adds another layer to the argument about their technological sophistication. Hancock's general thesis although not solely focused on the Denisovans, aligns with such revelations. He consistently champions the notion that many ancient societies, far from being primitive, might have had knowledge and technologies that contemporary archaeology might undervalue or overlook. The Denisovan discoveries, such as the intricately designed bracelet and the functional needle, underscored this perspective. They suggest that they are facets of our ancestors' lives, knowledge, and abilities that we might yet be unaware of or might have misunderstood. It is worth noting that genomic research over the past few decades has revealed that many contemporary human populations carry traces of DNA from both Denisovans and Neanderthals. These genetic remnants stand as testament to interbreeding events that occurred between our direct ancestors and these other hominins. For instance, many populations in East Asia, 
Southeast Asia and Oceania to have between 2% to 5% Denisovan DNA, while most non-African populations possess around 1% to 2% Neanderthal DNA. Hancock, in his exploration of ancient civilizations and their potentially profound interconnectedness, would likely emphasize the importance of such genetic revelations. These DNA traces are more than mere footnotes in our evolutionary story. They underscore the rich tapestry of interactions, migrations, and exchanges that have shaped the course of human history. Such intertwining narratives fit seamlessly into Hancock's overarching themes. He has always emphasized the significance of looking beyond traditional narratives, seeking connections that might be overlooked by mainstream academia, and appreciating the profound depth and complexity of ancient cultures. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.